you're not an idiot for forgetting that you're limit limitless. You're not, and you're not stupid because you haven't been operating from that. And you're not um, self-indulgent when you do. Welcome back to Happiness in Progress. I'm your host, Danielle Craig. I'm an Emmy award-winning journalist, a mom, wife, and you know what I like to say, just a person looking for more joy in the everyday. If you like listening to this podcast, do me a favor and take a minute to rate it. It helps me so much when you rate the podcast. It helps me be seen by other people. It helps me continue to do this work. And I so appreciate you for it. So thank you so much. And thank you for being here. Okay. Let me introduce you to today's guest. I am so excited to introduce you to Allison Faulkner. She is a branding and events expert, host of the podcast, Awesome with Allison, which is a top 100 health and wellness podcast. She's a consultant for Fortune 500 companies, a writer, speaker, self-proclaimed nonsense dancer, and she is the CEO of Allison's Brand School. She says she is obsessed with her kids, husband, family, and friends. And you know what? She just released a book called You're Already Awesome. And that's what we're talking about today. We also talk about where our worth comes from and where we think it comes from and how we are limitless that and everything in between. I had a blast with this conversation, so let's get to it. Allison, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. We're already having so much fun. I know we are. <laughs> and I loved reading your book. It just spoke right to my soul. We have all the same favorite authors and I just, I loved it. So let's start with what is it? to be awesome. What does awesome mean? That's such a good question. And thank you so much. It's so nice you read the book. So I love that because uh, I say first off in the book that like, I love the word awesome and not just in like a gum popping, like air, airbrushed on a surfboard kind of way. I am from Southern California, but I love the word awesome because it is this real sense of like awe inducing. And for me, the definition of awesome. So the book is called you're already awesome. Okay. What does it even mean to be awesome? And for me, that awakening to your awesome is returning to your wholeness returning to you as just your non-negotiable worth and awesome is not necessarily going to be a tizzy of positive feeling all the time, but it is that like belief in your worth and that belief in your wholeness and that belief in you're good. You're just good in, in the messy and the hard and the mistakes and the failures you're good so that you're returning to a place that isn't quite so low that, you know, when, when the hits come and the blows come, they hurt, but they don't like cut as deep. And so operating from that place, the compassion and the practice of operating from that place of knowing your wholeness, knowing your greatness, that is my definition of awesome. I already have goosebumps. I love it. Thank so you. What, how did you find your awesome? How did you tune into your awesome? And I think if someone follows you on social media and sees your dance moves and sees how, like how Southern California awesome you are, awesome. <laughs> how did you, how did you tune into the, this other part, this wonder part, the awesome part? Mm. Oh, I love wonder. Very, yes. That's a very good word. Um, so I spent a lot of focus for, you know, the first part of my online and writing career, blogging, crafts, markets, um, but really just loved writing and sharing. And I really have always been very interested in philosophy and, you know, existentialism, like why, but why, but why, you know, even, even during college, high school, even as a child, it's been exhausting. Um, and so like, what is reality? You know, what is real? And that like, I can make everything about the matrix. <laughs> it is exhausting. And like, I can make everything the matrix, like mm -hmm. everything. Well, I'm like, well, that's the matrix. But <laughs> so it kind of does come from that exhaustion of, um, having that kind of as like a driving force in the way that I operate juxtaposed with society, culture, and just, you know, very much like a Western civilization. One of the first things I talk about in the book is that we are operating from this lie that our value is not that non-negotiable worth. Our value is tied to what we create. Our value is tied to what we achieve. Our value is tied to the value other people give us. 
So I'd been blogging and doing keynotes and I had actually started this, um, this series on YouTube called search for your awesome or like how to be awesome where, you know, I always wanted to talk about like the self-development stuff, but there's like this level of why do I get to talk about it? Mm -hmm. I'm a crazy person, you know, but it's the crazy people who are interested in talking about it because we're not okay. Right. So doing all of the things and giving myself permission to share online. And I had started my blog, which at the time was called she blogs, she blogs like Ricky Martin. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, she okay. bangs. She bangs. <laughs> and so, um, I had, these are things that I wanted to talk about this kind of essay writing part of me, but, um, didn't really feel qualified. And so almost like tongue in cheek, I started this series on YouTube called how to be awesome. And interestingly enough, I had worked with Microsoft, um, at some events, doing some events for them. And they saw my contact there, saw the series on YouTube, really liked it and had me host influencer events across the country called search for your awesome with Bing. Cause it was a search engine. I know that's good. Ah, um, that is good. Like a, a, a copywriter. I'm a copywriter. Okay. <laughs> The search for your awesome. And this is the best part of the search for your awesome tour. So it's like a dream come true. At this point, I'm like, oh, I'm like a Martha Stewart. I do all the things, but also I talk about the love and I'm really deep. And we're, I'm going from like, I think there were like six cities, event to event. And it was like Allison having a breakdown progressing further and further talus and like crumpled in an airport as a shell of a human trying to get to the next yeah. <laughs> event and so I came back and I was invited to do a keynote and I had been talking about this how to be awesome how to be awesome and I was invited to do a keynote at this conference and I made that slide how to be awesome and I sat there and I looked at it I was like this isn't working this isn't this isn't <laughs> this is not working. And it really felt like inspiration. And it was where I just took the word B and I made a slide that crossed it out and wrote feel. Uh, How do I feel awesome? And I had done an internship at Hallmark cards, um, as a copywriter and working in the like alternative humor department. And I I was going through like a, a rough time and I had a huge anxiety attack one day at Hallmark under my desk, you know, at this internship, like trying to be a professional. And I had written this little booklet and it's, and I had written only you can be you. Mm. And so, so it was kind of like these pieces started to come together. I had written that years ago and I'm making the slideshow. And the reason why this, I thought about this is I was making the slideshow and I was talking about how things can look from the outside. So you bring up like me dancing on social media. And it's funny because kind of no matter how I have a podcast. I've had it for years. I share very openly, no matter how much I talk about my struggle with anxiety, no matter how much I talk about how these things are difficult, people are like, they just don't hear it or they don't, (laughs) they don't believe it because they have, I think we're getting better, but they have such a hard time marrying that you can be um, an enthusiastic person and also crash and be in your bed and not talk to anybody. Uh And actually Uh you know, you think of like Chris Farley, you think of like a lot of comedians and people who put themselves out there. Um, I, you know, I heavily relate to Justin Bieber and like these, these and Elvis Presley and like Freddie Mercury, kind of these tortured artists where um, you love the one side of it, but it like takes such a toll on the other side. And so I had put together. I wonder, I want to stop there for a minute because I wonder why we do that. Like, even if you are talking and you're like, I am dealing with anxiety. I, if if you post a picture and you're under your desk with an anxiety attack and people are just blind to it. And I wonder if it has to do with, we are uncomfortable talking about anxiety. And part of it I'm sure is you can't be enthusiastic or you can't be funny, or you can't have energy if you also have anxiety. But I wonder if we're just, we're getting better, but I wonder if we're scared of it. I wonder if it's too scary to talk about. You know, I think that's a really good question. And I've asked myself that a lot, even when I've had a really hard time and and I share this in my book too, like I've had a hard time, like getting medical help um, because the way that I present my anxiety, it's like, I don't perform it or share it in a way that convinces people I have it. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and (laughs) so they just are like, you're fine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, I don't think I am, which, Mm -hmm. um, that that's actually been like a huge struggle. So I do think that it's like a multifaceted, um, a multifaceted issue, but I do think like hearing the way that you just described it, I think part of it is the cognitive dissonance that it requires. Mm, mm-hmm. and cognitive cognitive dissonance is like that, you know, expanding that stretching of the mind where I hold two truths that seem opposing and I they can be sa- true at the same time. Yeah. Right. So like one of my favorite ones is like from the Bible, like an original cognitive dissonance from the Bible that people are familiar with is like, um, multiply and replenish the earth, but partake of the fruit to Eve Mm -hmm. where, where it's like, okay, like you're, so the, the tree for people who aren't familiar with the Bible, it's like the good and evil and like of truth. It's like, you're not going to know how to have sex, (laughs) multiply and replenish the earth. Um, unless you partake of this, but God, you know, in this story is saying, don't partake of this. And I love, I love that story when I talk about cognitive dissonance, because, it's, um, it's, it's a marker of emotional intelligence. Like Carl mm-hmm. Young, mm-hmm. Carl Young would talk a lot about holding cognitive dissonance and Freud as well. Holding cognitive dissonance is a marker of having that emotional intelligence. So not to say I'm walking around being like, everybody's not emotionally intelligent enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm saying it's a really, really difficult thing. Um, And as a society, we are getting better in some ways about talking about anxiety and mental illness, but we're also all part of a lot of us social media where there are certain ways that it's acceptable to present, Mm -hmm. to present whatever the emotion is. And so I don't see vulnerability as a picture of me with a tear streaked face posting that picture. That's not authentic to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it would get me a lot of views. <laughs> it would be very attention grabbing mm-hmm. and I'm not and no shame on anybody who shares that, but that's not how I behave in that scenario. Um, and as I heal and have less shame around my pain, it is easier to get help, find help, communicate for help. But also, I mean, gosh, when you're in pain and when you have anxiety, it is so hard to also heal your shame around having that pain Uh and that that anxiety. And so a lot of the concepts in the book um, kind of approach that. And this is interesting because in this keynote where I had just done this search for your awesome with being tour, I actually took a map of the U.S. And I was like, it looked like Allison was throwing all these glamorous parties, but in reality, and then I had like the little cry emoji. I put the cry emoji on all of the different cities <laughs> that I had been in. And it was like, Al- actually Allison's breakdown crying to Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so after that slide, it was like, okay, I put my how to be awesome, which is kind of like a graphic I had. And I was like, okay, let's just think about this for a minute how to be awesome, how to be awesome. What does that question suggest? That you're not awesome already. Yeah. Yeah. That I, that I inherently have to be something more different, achieve more, create more, earn more, prove more, whatever your word is for you. Right. And that's when I changed it from how do I be more awesome to how, how do I feel more awesome? Mm. And then I took that little, only you can be you. And that's when I added again, I felt very inspired. It was like, I'm, I feel like we can be inspired and write and share things that like, and this is how my book felt. Like I read it later and I was like, who wrote this? This is great. I really need to read that. (laughs) This girl, she knows what she's talking about. Oh my gosh. 100%. I've had that. And then I've had authors to come on and I read their words to them and they're like, oh my gosh, I needed to hear that. Who did that? Yes. Yes. 100%. Because that's like, you know, like you're a human, you're a person. Like we are out here doing what we need for help. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's what I feel like uh, brings like true connection as mm-hmm. well, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't have all the answers. I'm just uh, working on it. And when I changed that, how do I feel more awesome? It was like, only you can be you and you're already as awesome as you need to be. And mm, that's- I love it. That- 
full thought. And that's what I say at the end of every single one of my podcast episodes. So what's interesting is I didn't know what to name my book. And I wrote the whole book <laughs> and then my body broke down and I quit the internet and I quit everything. And I was like, never mind. I don't want any of it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to like moonwalk away and the book editors will just like, let me keep that one check they gave me. And then we won't talk anymore. Like I just was, you know, I had a whole master plan for my exit strategy. Um, and it was amazing because it wasn't like a decision. It wasn't like on Julia and Julia when they're like putting the index cards on the board, trying to name her book. It wasn't mm -hmm. anything like that. It was like my beautiful, wonderful editor just named the book. You're already awesome. And I just sat there and I was like, I've been saying that for almost a decade at the end of every keynote, at the end of every podcast episode, at the end of every workshop. So we're talking hundreds, if not thousands of times I've said this because it's what I need to hear. And I'm like, I don't know what to name the book. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. I yeah. love that. And, um, it goes back to this worth issue that we have where we are constantly trying to find the worth in all of the things and the things that we do and have, and the titles that we have, how can we like disconnect from this need to prove we're worthy and sink into that feeling of, I am already awesome. Mm, you see, you're so good at it. You're already doing it. Cause even when you, I was like, Oh, that's so good. <laughs> when you said I it, I might already be awesome. I wow. think, hey, I think you are. <laughs> if you're not in progress, you've arrived. Okay? <laughs> wait, wait, what? But I know I said that behind you. <laughs> I don't know if that works. I've already arrived. Well, you're the, the destination is the progress <laughs> matrix. Okay. It so, is no, 100%. That is it. That is destination and, and, is the growth. Yes. Love it. And to your, and to your point. So the way that I, I wanted the, the book to operate is I do, I come from an advertising background. I come from this like succinct messaging, um, Hallmark cards, you know, like, like universal specific messaging. So when it came to, okay, how can this be easy? Because I love, you know, we both love Eckhart Tolle. I love Brene Brown. I love all the people, but also people are so hurt and overwhelmed. And I don't want to ask anybody to do anything else. And so I chose this word shift where it's just a little shift in perspective, a shift in thought. So all you have to do is read the book that I wanted the actual act of reading the book to be a cathartic experience. And what I ask people to do, so there's 12 shifts and all of the shifts are aimed to shift you back to feeling you're awesome, to feel awesome now. Not that you have to be more or do more and not that you have to not feel any negative emotions but that you are in your state of anxiety or in your state of depression, you still are connected and tethered to that wholeness, that truth of your inherent awesomeness. And so how to do that, I believe can be as simple as a shift in that. So one of the shifts is um, I'm uniquely qualified to live my life. Okay. So first off, you know, you or anybody listening can just ask, how does that thought make me feel? So how does it make you feel? Like I'm uniquely qualified to live my life. Mm, you're asking me. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm a podcaster too. So I'll just turn it right around. <laughs> I, I feel like that gives me power and that gives me strength and confidence to move forward. I'm uniquely capable. Yeah. I love that. And if somebody listening is like, well, that sucks because I don't have this skill and this skill and this skill I need. So yeah. I'm not uniquely qualified to live my life. Oh, good. Fight with me, argue with me, like get mad and notice, notice the rift, notice the tension and notice like, but what if I could believe it? What if my neighbor believed it? What if my mom, oh my gosh, maybe what if my mother-in-law believed it? Would she stop telling me, right? Like how to mm -hmm. live my life? Like, how can I see how this thought that maybe sounds too good to be true for me, or maybe gives you like a really like awesome sense of empowerment? How does it feel in your body and using those shifts as a tether to anchor back to your inherent wholeness? So the first shift is I can wake up to my awesome. And that, that shift really talks about 
um, presence. You're not the voice. You're the observer. We're getting into like a lot of mindfulness, you know, OG mindfulness things here. Uh, a lot of spirituality practices. But I do talk about in the book, whether you want to believe in God or not believe in God, it's kind of like Alcoholics Anonymous is the model I think is phenomenal where it's like connecting to this higher power is going, whether whatever you call it is going to be important, but it doesn't matter to me what you call it, Mm -hmm. right? What matters to me is that you're tapping into this great whole. Um, and so that's the, just the so daily- much I want to talk about from this. Okay, yes, all this means. <laughs> Can this be a five hour podcast? Yeah. Um, uh, first of all, we were talking about maybe when we talk about you're you uniquely qualified to live your life, people getting kind of upset and having a reaction. I think that reaction, it shows you it's your evidence that you are uniquely qualified in your spot because you have all of those feelings about oh, we're wrong or, oh, you're the one that uniquely knows your life. Um, what else? What else? There's so much. Yeah. I want to, I want to make sure that we have a minute to talk about being limitless. Um, and I have, Ooh, thank you. I haven't talked so about this yet. I want to read from your book. I, I love that. I love when people read to me from my own book. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to inspire yourself. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's help. Quote, is a mom who loses her child no longer a mother? If you're a dancer who can no longer dance, is there a reason to live? If you only see yourself as valuable when you're working, are you of no worth when you lose your job? And this is exactly why defining ourselves in this way is so problematic. And you go on to say, the shift, my true self is limitless, invites us to remember who we really are and what we're actually capable of. It reminds us that we are like the sun and all we need to do is burn and shine without question. How did you, I love this part. I think it's so important because we are putting our worth in, in all of these external things that that are just temporary. And even in this short lifetime that we have, they're gonna change so much. What do you want people to know about tuning into that limitless feeling? Mm, I love that. Thank you so much. Um, that you're not an idiot for forgetting that you're limit- limitless. You're not, and you're not stupid because you haven't been operating from that, and you're not um, self-indulgent when you do. Because you know we truly know that we cannot give what we do not have right? Like that's like, I can't hand you something if I don't have it yet. We walk around giving this compassion or forgiveness or what we think is compassion or forgiveness to other people when we don't extend it to ourselves or even the benefit of the doubt, or even like that limitless vision that you might see in your children or in a loved one, but you don't see it in yourself. But what, you know, the hard, the really hard pill to swallow is that you are giving a conditional version of that belief, a conditional version that like you're saying that tied to mortality tied to um achievement like you're giving a conditional version of that when you are not giving an unconditional version to yourself Mm. and so that true self is my true self is limitless it's very easy to think will make me a monster this will make me an evil dictator this will make me full of myself and not understand my limitations shockingly, the exact opposite is true. (laughs) Because when you give yourself that unconditional permission to change, to grow, to evolve, to have a metamorphosis, you're extending it to everyone around you. And I think everyone can really relate to, especially if they're listening to your podcast, they can relate to going through a process of progress and growth having people in life not respond very favor- favorably to it. Mm-hmm. And that can feel so like just disheartening and you feel dejected and you feel rejected. And then you might even start questioning the ch- changes or thought, thought like processes that you shifted that have helped you been feeling healthier. And then you maybe go and tell a loved one and they're like, I don't know how I feel about that. And then you just like shut them down. Yeah. Right. Because we're like, oh, they're right. I'm, I am a monster, right? Like this. Yeah. And so what I would want people to take from my true self is limitless and shining and burning is you're only going to help other people shine. You're only going to help other people burn and 
you're going to feel better <laughs> doing it. So if you sound too exhausted to burn and shine, it's because you're burning and shining in this way where you're giving from what you don't truly have. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think it, it happens simultaneously. Once you are shining, you're not having to try to like be out of breath, trying to help all the people. It just happens yeah. at the same time. And I love that you mentioned the shame in the beginning. You're not an idiot for forgetting. And even after this conversation, we'll forget. I talk about it all the time. I teach it all the time and I forget and I have to recenter yep. and come back and it's okay. And it's part of life. Um, so I love that you granted that permission. I think that so much of what you talk about in the book, the worth and the limitless, beat that feeling of being limitless. Um, there's always two parts to it. And it's first of all, that we don't, we don't know, but then second of all, it seems like there's always that shame part. Mm. How do you, how do you deal with that? When, yeah. when that feeling comes back and you know, you shouldn't is, is what we do to ourselves. Yeah. I know I shouldn't be thinking this. How do you, yeah. how do you move forward? You know, one thing that has helped me so much that I do talk about in the book, but that again, felt like, Oh, thanks for the inspiration. I, I don't know where this came from. Like, I needed this. People were like, that's really good. I'm like, I know, right? Like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is, is just noticing the language that you're speaking to yourself in. And so there's, I think I, I think it's in the book. You can tell me. There's like this language of limits. And the language of limits is the language of shame and the language of fear and then the language of love and the language of limitlessness is that that language of expansion so there's two exercises that people can use the first one is to notice the language so if it's rooted in shame or fear it's not it's not awesome it's not expansive it's not god it's not light it's not truth because truth will always expand you and open you up and that's the second exercise is how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel like your chest expands, your shoulders come up, you can take a deep breath when that, that dialogue is running where you're like, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough. Or does it make you go into like a protective position where maybe you cross your arms, the fetal mm -hmm. position, your back starts to hunch. And so just using those, um, using those almost like a little alarm bells to just step back and notice that has been, I mean, shame. Oh my gosh. It is so sneaky. Like it, it is hysterical because as soon as you like root out shame around one thing, you find shame like in a whole different process. Mm -hmm. like, it, it's like a very noxious weed. Like it, you cannot get that crap out. It just, it's like mint, right? Like mint in a garden. It just, yeah. Keeps yeah. The, the, we've got like I, I'm thinking of the blackberries because the blackberries they yeah. come in and they got all their thorns but they also got the fruit so they're like I belong here you want me yes. but then they have the thorns and they're tearing you apart yes and it's like you're trying to get to the good and it's like love and truth and you're awesome that speaks in the language of love and the language of love is limitless so an application for this is let's talk about your physical body. So this is a big one where we're like, I do not look good enough. I am not in shape enough, but these clothes do not fit me well enough. Listen to how many times I say the word enough, enough. And one of my favorite things that I say is enough is a decision, not an amount. And so enough though, is framing things in lack. It's framing things in fear. So if you're hearing that word, you're most likely shame is speaking to you. So just considering the source of the language, um, that has been a really helpful practice for me. What is your number one tip to finding more joy in the good, the bad, and the in-between? Mm, just be nicer to yourself. Just cut yourself some slack. You're not an idiot. You're not an idiot. You're, You're not a piece of crap. You're not a piece of crap. And just, just give yourself more compassion, more compassion than you even think is correct. And that's, yeah. the, that's the good amount. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I just had such a fun, wonderful time with you. I had the best time. I had such a good time talking to Alice and I hope you enjoyed this conversation. As always, you can find information about her book and how to follow her in show notes. Thanks for being here on Happiness and Progress. Mm -hmm.